Hey guys, it is Magic9 back for another Let's Play, and this time we're doing The Testament of Sherlock Holmes. I'm kind of a huge adventure game fan, um, but the Sherlock Holmes series has really tested me. Uh, it's the puzzles are just like next level. They're they're pretty serious, and I've I've played both uh, Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper and uh, Sherlock Holmes: The Awakened, and Oh god, it's just, it's, they're, they, they're pretty challenging. The puzzles are pretty challenging. And sometimes it can be, it can be almost a little bit too much where you find it's, it's even difficult to figure out where the game wants you to go next. Like, there's no clear sort of, um, I guess, uh, line of objectives where you're like, okay, go here, go here, get this, get this. Because it's, I mean, it, it almost feels like the, just like the entire story is one big puzzle because like you have to, to figure out how to start the puzzles to work the puzzles and then you have to try and figure out the puzzles to figure out more puzzles and it's just it just keeps building but it's great the story is great the writing is great uh this is frogware and i believe they're frogwares and they were the ones who created uh the the sherlock games that i mentioned and those are pretty good but this is um this is the latest one that they released and it seems pretty pretty updated uh, in terms of graphics and um, animate like the the cutscenes and everything and the gameplay uh, I played a little bit of this and it seems like I feel like the interface is a little bit smoother so uh, I'm not gonna do my other saving I'm actually gonna start fresh um. And I may have to cut the video sometimes. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to have like a like a little walkthrough slash thing over here on the side. But it's these these puzzles are very involved. Like the like the one of the first major ones. It just it killed me. So um, well we'll just see. Someone's breaking into the house. Quick, get him! It's Gremlins. It's the little gremlins! Oh, oh, it's just a kid. Yeehaw. Really? Oh. These children don't know how to speak, they just make sound effects. <laughs> very, very disturbing sound effects. Oh, what's this? This is a hat! I've never seen a hat before! I'm just going to oh. rummage around. Ah. Ah. I got pricked by an old What's drug this? needle. Mother was a drug Ew. addict. Ugh, he's got a huge cleft chin. This is kind of weird. These puppets. Not very interesting puppets, but uh, these kids don't seem to need much to be entertained. Ah. A. That's what the subtitle said. A. Ooh. Mother's gonna beat you. Oh, look! It's a book! Shut up, you can't read! Maybe it's a book about pirates with a treasure map. Are you an idiot? You're such an idiot. No, I don't think so. You're so stupid. <laughs> the frown on the girl's face. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. It's called Inmidious Rest, you fucking twat. And so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It all began early one morning in 1898, when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. Uh, the way they say this, Marquis. It kills me every time. And here's Sherlock Holmes. In new, What's high definition. Idea, we can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace, and very much faster than Inspector Baines, too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? 
I think this I is the, this is clearly the same Watson me, uh, from the other necessary. games, but I don't know if this is the same Sherlock from the other as games. Our friend Baines thought was best. He likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. I thought I could be as smart as you. I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. That's okay, Watson. Ah, we all know you're see, dumb. But you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. Like... A matter of course? In the middle of the night, when everyone is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running. But the door is locked and there is a strong smell of burning from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, the robbed Marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the soul. Is that key. how British people a say Marquis? I say Marquis, but they not have Marquis. managed to arrive it's in time it's to put killing it out. me that they keep saying that. It is that. at that moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. I'm using a new mic, and um, uh, it's pretty good quality. However, I'm still going to lower the volume on my headphones just a wee bit in case it's somehow picking that up, because I was feeling like it was a little bit loud for me. Uh, my old mic would pick up the sounds of uh, the game from my headphones, which is horrific. Walk in the desired location, look at the broken showcase, and click on it. So this is like basically the tutorial phase. Uh, showcase. Broken show- oh. This thing. This window was cut with a diamond. A clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. Um... See, I like this um, this interface a little bit more. In the previous games, it was kind of annoying because you a would look at something and then you'd click on something else by accident. Someone tried it was to very the glass, uh, but he inaccurate. Was Therefore, the, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. Oops. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. So that's my inventory button. Near the piano, some music scores are on the floor. I need something. You can activate an item. Oh. Da. Let us examine the crumpled score. Yes. We are going to examine Nothing of interest here. These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. I don't understand why these music scores are covered with soot. Press R or middle mouse button to switch first person mode. Yeah. I'm just going through this so that it'll That the space button um, in the previous games would kinda just show you the things that you can interact with. Um, in this game Heading towards his chosen escape route, probably the window. It's the actually like a timed, uh, like there's like a timer fire. on but how often that you can use it. Fire out so once? it's. I'm still not sure if I like that. Footprints. You are because not this game can get really hard. To examine them. But there I mean, is no need. It is soot. The servants must have trodden in it while they were putting out the fire. This game is a puzzle game, Strange. first and foremost, so I mean, there if you just let people ride on the hint system the whole way, then... The uh, to be fair, though, here, if just they the didn't have such uh, cord, nebulous the fire, objectives, then people wouldn't have to ride the hint system quite as much. You know? That's just... yeah. The chest wasn't opened. The necklace wasn't in it.
not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. Dinner time! A candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. It's a poltergeist. I've, I've solved the mystery. It's okay, guys. We can go home. These documents are not very interesting, even though they're addressed to the Minister of Maritime Affairs. The Marquis himself. The Marquis himself. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually when the door was opened by the servants. Okay. Oh, wait. This draft screen makes an ideal hiding place. As the theft was committed, what the hell do you use a drought screen for? That the thief is that for like hid himself behind the draft screen cold or and something? waited until he was alone in the room? I mean, this isn't a bedroom, so it's not a changing room. Strange. There aren't any prints. Yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. And ah, we've gotten everything. Mr. Holmes. Here's Inspector Bates. Here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> for what? Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? <laughs> It's possible. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation I think it was fairies. is that he escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well then, explain. Dr. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? I don't know. Because he is very small? Stop teasing us, Holmes. Is it a fucking no? Because he is small. Small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that. Without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. Oop, dropping some knowledge as per usual. The animal had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool, which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. Clumsy the frightened little bastard. monkey jumped from the chimney by swinging from the bell pool, thus alerting the house servants. He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally, the servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. As simple as that. A brilliant explanation! Bravo, Holmes! Yes, well done. And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were we unable to find it? Because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim. I feel like Inspector what Baines did? looks like no the uh, actor who did yes, Two Face. A poor goldfish in whose destiny Batman was to die, crushed by that was it? No, it was Dark Knight. The Dark Knight Rises in England. Yeah, he, he kind of the looks kind of looks like that actor. I can't remember his name right now the though. Little monkey had likely hung he was also in Thank You for Smoking and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. The jewels fell into the aquarium where they remain now. Whoa. 
It's Holmes. Oh, I love the expression on his face. He corks his eyebrows. He's like, yeah, I'm awesome. I like this Holmes. I like how droll he is. Intact, just a little wet. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis looks like a douchebag. Credit to your reputation. Well, thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and. Inspector, a bank has just been held up. You must follow me at once. Orders of Scotland Yard. What times? Sirs, duty calls. My regards, Marcus. See, doesn't even look like that well actor. Again, I don't know his name again. Still don't know his name. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. That was a nice little intro. Start to set things up for the story in ways that will be soon revealed. This morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet, and I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. Okay, I've already read this letter, and it's exceptionally long. Uh, so if you guys want to read it, you can just pause it. I'll kind of scroll through it uh, gradually, but it's it's quite lengthy, as you can see. Basically, it's it's just describing, um, you know, the the case and how an, a reporter is accusing him of stealing the necklace, which has gone missing because the one that the Marquis has is a fake. It's a counterfeit, and everybody's turning to Holmes because he was the one who put the necklace in the the, the safe. And then there's this. The ancestry of Prince Woodville recognized is just some crap about the royal family or something. Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. <laughs> you know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound Ooh, to follow. Glory. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Bit arrogant, Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. That's to be expected. <laughs> ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second to last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that, Rack? It's a very good hearing, actually. This is this is what I was surprised to find was this um, dialogue wheel. Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed, they would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. 
it is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's soufflés. Oh, zing! To solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in.